You know, it's fascinating. I went out to uh, have a drink the other night with um, uh, uh, with a friend of mine, Eugene Merman, who is a comedian who I don't know if most people know this, but he came to this country as a uh, and it's an immigrant from Russia. As, I came uh, as an immigrant from Canada. Well, yes, I know that's true. It was not <laughs> the same circumstances because at that time, you know, he was saying like, you know, when I came over here as a kid, uh, I used to get called a commie fag in school all the time because yeah. this, of course, how during the, the Jews, how about the Irish threat of the 1860s? Right, the well, Finians. And, and he's like, you know, when I hear this stuff about the the Syrian refugees, like, I was coming from America's enemy. <laughs> I was yeah. a refugee here, essentially, and, um, and, 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 and came under circumstances that were not as dire as, as, as the Syrians. And he's like, I know how hard that was for me, never mind like, what we're seeing here. With, totally. You know, the, it, 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 is, it really is, um, it, it, it is stunning. And, and I can only ima- imagine, I mean, like the, the, that's why the implications of, I mean, we're a little bit off topic here, a little bit, but, but the implications of the rest of the Republican Party not denouncing Trump uh, yeah. and is, is so, uh, carries so much weight. It carries See, so my much father, weight. My father, yeah, yeah you, know, you know, it's like, it's like this. It's like, um, you know, there's a binary, there's like an either or. George Bush, you're with us or you're against us, right? Uh, and, and John Cretchen said in, in 2004, how about not? How about we can be a third way? And this is what I want to talk to you about, the geopolitical component of this. Um, you know, it, during the Vietnam War, Nixon, you know, who called Trudeau an asshole, and Trudeau replied, I've been called worse things by nicer people, hmm. which I thought was a great comeback. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, the Canadian government refused to, jo- to join into this binary. You're either Soviet Union, you're either in the communist world, or you're with America. And Canada said, how about not? How about a third way? How about we have relations with Cuba? How about we trade with China? How about we, you know, play hockey against the Russians? And it, these, these things sort of pass by, and everyone thinks Canadians are polite, but it's, it's a very significant difference. And so what Justin Trudeau's saying is, is, yes, there's a problem with Islamic extremism, and yes, Canada has a role to play in that. But no, there's not just two ways to think about it. You know, you either are a jihadi, or you're a kamikaze maniac trying to kill, you know, your Ted Cruz. It's just that is it's just a false dilemma. And so I feel like what's happening under Trudeau is, is a third way is going to emerge. And we'll see what the world does with that in the, in the light of Paris and, and uh, you know, these attacks, these horrible attacks. But, you know, the, the, the emergence of a different perspective, you know, doesn't necessarily announce itself with trumpets. But I think that's what you're beginning to see in Canada. I wonder if um, if this the, the the impact of Canadian politics will have will or I should say, I wonder if Canadian politics uh, will have more of an impact on the politics in this country uh, than it has in the past, which I don't think is insignificant, the amount, you know, I mean, because I, a, a much of our conversation, I don't know how much, I there's no way to quantify it, but certainly in the, in the sort of broader popular conversation about single payer health care, a lot of that is a function of being able to reference Canada. Uh, as having it. I mean, that's just, you know... Th- well, D- Donald Trump's in favor of that. You know? <laughs> well, yes, but I'm saying, I'm saying I wonder if, you know, the, in the 10 years or so that, that Harper has been um, uh, the, the, the prime minister there, and, and, and yeah. certainly, um, you know, in, in the years, uh, you know, from like 01 to 06, there, there was nothing that was going to get through the American psyche uh, beyond what had happened on, on 9-11. But I wonder yeah. just like, you know, if the if frankly if the internet and the the sort of the the breaking down of of media sources and just I wonder if this stuff is going to filter it's hard to measure how much it's it has been impacting American politics to have essentially a uh, you know a governor Lepage I would I, I would you know uh, 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 an analyze uh, 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 make the analogy of Harper in Canada. Um, uh, how much that's going to impact this I'd say country? A couple of things. Yeah, a couple of things. A couple of big frame things. I think. Number one is that Obama has never really had a true sort of bromance in geopolitical terms. Mm. He's had some allies. He's 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 had alignments. But I think with Trudeau, he he finds someone whose voice is in three dimensions like his. And I don't say that because I'm making it up. I'm saying it because 
Obama's White House pr- spokesperson, Ben Rhodes, told me that, you know, in an exclusive interview. And because Canada's having its first state dinner in Washington in 20 years under Trudeau, and that Trudeau, sorry, that, and that Obama has expressed a personal interest in getting to know him and mentor him, you know, th- that is not insignificant when the President of the United States reaches out like that. That hasn't happened in a very long time. But secondarily, you know, I, I'm told, and I don't know how real this will turn out to be because, uh, you know, you despair, but I'm told that Hillary Clinton and her people were, have been watching the way that Trudeau ran and uh, taking lessons from how to run a progressive campaign, a successful one, um, by standing up to divisive rhetoric and, and, and staring down the kind of, uh, 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 you know, Islamophobia that you get merchandised instead of, you know, trying to piecemeal it or mealy mouth stuff. Um, Trudeau was very direct in confrontation with Harper, and he called, he called him on it, and it worked. I, I was really there was the, the you wrote about the the issue of uh, of dual citizens uh, Canadian yeah. and yeah, t- just tell us about that because I thought that was a fascinating I mean it's such a sophisticated response in terms of degrading the citizenship that I wonder if like you know the American population frankly with all due respect to Americans uh, could really sort of if that could resonate here but but explain that that to us because I found yeah. that fascinating so. Harper introduced a law called Bill C-24, uh, and it was, you know, basically uh, the Patriot Act, Canadian style, with a bunch of permutations that were different. And one of them was this uh, fashionable idea in certain reactionary quarters that that um, people born in other countries, what they really mean is Muslims, who uh, behave in ways that uh, are unacceptable, with, by which they mean convicted of terrorism, which can mean a million things. It doesn't mean that you've got a suicide vest on. It can mean that you are, for example, Palestinian, and you give money to a group that's uh, supporting people in Gaza, just say. Right. You know, the, the way that this uh, aiding and abetting or with providing material support to terrorism can be defined so broadly. that those people, those brown people with their funny God, aren't really citizens because they weren't born here like us. And so you can be citizens. You're talking about you're thinking, naturalized Canadian citizens. Yes, you're right. talking about sit, people who uh, are citizens of a country, but were not born there. Harper uh, decided that their citizenship should be different from every other Canadian citizenship, the Canadians that are born in Canada. And so he created a law that enabled the Minister for Immigration to revoke their citizenship with no judicial review and no possible judicial review. So... You know, my friend, uh, Srinivas Krishna, is a remarkable, wonderful filmmaker and uh, technology developer and um, human being. He's just one of my favorite people in life. And he calls me up when this law passes, and he says, so now, and he's lived his whole life in Canada since he was two years old. He was born in India. And he's like, so I'm no longer, if you decide to take, if you decide to take it away, I'm no longer Canadian? It was just shocking. And so what happened in the debates was um, Stephen Harper said in this debate, well, of course, why wouldn't we remove citizenship from terrorists? Now, there's so many assumptions that's so pregnant with so many different meanings, that statement. But Trudeau looked straight in the eye and said to him, a Canadian is a Canadian is a Canadian. Now, you've got a pretty de- degraded discourse when you need to assert that kind of thing uh, in, a, in a national debate. But that's where things were heading. And, and I think that Canadians, um, the majority, it turned out, um, Agreed with Trudeau and the NDP, it should be said, because, you know, they got 20, 20 some percent of the vote, too. So you had like more or less 65 percent again voting progressively, broadly speaking. The, the idea, and, though, that, that Harper made, I mean, excuse me, that Trudeau made that argument that when you when you make a Canadian citizenship for some people sort of contingent or conditioned or yeah, that you're yeah. actually degrading. Uh, what it means to be Canadian, broadly speaking. I mean, just that concept that even though this may not impact, um, it, you know, it, it is not is not possible to impact everyone on its face. It does impact the entire society. It degrades all of us to of to do it this. Does. That, but that argument is one that like is, seems to be very largely speaking, broadly speaking, absent from. From politics, even in this country too. I mean, maybe Hillary, maybe Hillary Clinton's people will read the article, and and consider this way of dis- discussing and conf- confronting bigotry. 
I, you know, I, I I would hope that there is some type of foundation in this country to do that. I mean, the idea of like you know that you can have. I mean, it's a, you know it's it's a commons argument, right? It's 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 it is it's an argument that uh, even though something doesn't necessarily directly impact everybody, there are shared values that if you impact those values, you're de- you're de- you're devaluing them for everybody. Yeah, I remember when I was a kid uh, in high school, we used to have these debates about the death penalty. And the idea that an innocent person would be, you know, or someone who wasn't necessarily guilty beyond reasonable doubt would be executed used to matter, right? In this country, that's long gone. Well, I mean, I shouldn't say that. It is coming back into fashion a little bit. But for a long time, it just was completely out of the question. If you were convicted and sentenced to death, whether you were mentally retarded or not or whatever, you know, DNA evidence aside, you deserve to die. And so, you know, these are not abstractions. You know, valuing life, valuing difference... You know, what Trudeau, the argument Trudeau makes in the piece, and you're going to see, I think, emerge through Canadian politics over the years to come, is that there is no such thing as a Canadian ethnicity or religion or uh, race, that all of Canadians put together, the multiplicity is what equals Canada. And what, you know, to me, um, it's a little Pollyanna-ish in the world of division and strife, of course, and that needs to be said, and it's not like... You know, there are no problems confronting the world or that Islamic extremism isn't real. But just the fact that 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 provides the moral basis for your political worldview, I think that is really important. But you guys will still have that whole um, uh, uh, legitimacy test with beer and hockey. Is that the way? Well, no, no. The one thing I can predict with absolute certainty is the Toronto Maple Leafs will continue to suck. (laughs) <laughs> now, now, my whole life. All right, Guy. Now, I got to say, like you know, uh, this talk. I know the impact it's having on our audience. Um, oh, Facebooking. We're gonna. <laughs> well, here's here's what I want to suggest because I know that um, that you always <laughs> like to get likes for your Facebook because um, you've just. This is the uh, only place I get them. Well, this is what I want to suggest, and and you know, uh, I I think this makes a lot of sense. I've thought about this. What okay. we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little contest. If Guy okay. gets 5,000 or more likes on Facebook from this interview, <laughs> now hold, hold on here. I'll eat my Five, hat. No, no. Uh, one of those people will be picked out randomly. You will adopt them so that they can get <laughs> Canadian citizenship. There you go. There you <laughs> so, go. I, I have dual nationality with Australia. So, so if you, you adopt have to get ready somebody. For the, so if you adopt you somebody, a, right, might, they'll be able to get like multiple, they'll be able to basically travel anywhere in the English speaking world with a passport right. if you adopt them. Now we can work out the, the tru- details. I'm a trailer park kid. That's right. We can, we can work out the details. Um, but we, but we have to, you know, we have to put a time limit too on these 5,000, uh, likes because we don't want to, you know, we don't want this thing to drag out. And then like, you know, 10, 15 years from now, you've got to adopt somebody, <laughs> um, but, uh, in, and there's so, a good I, chance. I think it's more like the Times should be on, like, because it, it would have to be the cedar effect, the cedar bump. The cedar right? bump. Well, because, uh, you know, what, what I may also do is try and um, see if I can't get you to adopt uh, Myla, uh, because <laughs> she could get that, and then maybe we could just dish off the whole college expense on you guys as well. Uh, there we can, you we go. can work out there the details go. on this. But Well, I, I will say, though, that I, I do try to keep my little Facebook thing somewhat lively, and, uh, and it is a good way to communicate. And, uh, you know, for us older guys, Sam, we've got to try to do social media. And it's, it's a mystery to me. It baffles me. But I, I get its importance. I just don't quite understand how to do it. So, yeah, 5,000 and you can come live with me in upstate New York, my wife and two kids. And, and uh, we'll all go to Canada together. Um, it's, oh, it's, uh, it's Guy Lawson two numeral two and on Facebook, we'll put a link to it. Um, and Oh, just give us an update. No, that's Twitter. That's Twitter's Guy Lawson two. I think right. Facebook's just Guy, Guy Lawson author. Yeah. All right. Fa- uh, Facebook will, will, we'll, we'll link to both at uh, majority.fm, but wait, give us an update uh, before you go on what's happening with, uh, both, both, uh, arms and the dudes in terms of, uh, the movie. Yeah. And also, uh, Octopus, is that going to be uh, like a, a, a movie, too, or on HBO? Oh, here, here's, here's, the, here's, the, here's the skinny. So okay. Arms of the Dudes has been made. It's shot. It's in the can. It comes out August 19th. All right. Fo- folks are going to want to read that book before uh, the movie comes out. Uh, oh, yeah. So- You're going to really want to get Christmas presents. With that. Oh, definitely. <laughs> but uh, the, uh, August 19th, it stars uh, 
Jonah Hill and Miles Teller, and there's a special cameo appearance from a massive movie star uh, in the movie as well. Uh, Octopus, it's not me. Octopus I just is, want to make that sorry? clear. It's not me. I don't want there to be no, any... No, it's Marin. It's Marin. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the uh, uh, Octopus is with HBO, and it's being written by a guy named Peter Gould, who's a terrific uh, writer. He He was a lead writer for Breaking Bad, and he's the producer of uh, Better Call Saul. And he's got a really interesting take on it. And then I have another thing, a Rolling Stone article called The Dukes of Oxy about oxycodone. We can come on and talk about that, Sam. I don't oh, think I we love do that. that one? I, I don't think we, we, we have had you on about that. Yes or no? Yeah. We? yeah I we can't did. remember. I think you did, yeah. So anyway, that's, that, that's with a guy named Mike DeLuca, and that's also being turned into a movie. They've got the writer working on that. So yeah, there's some stuff like that. But I, I, t- I got to say, you know, it's fun to be doing pure journalism, you know, like back in the saddle kind yeah. of stuff. Instead of narrative, you know, I love doing narrative stuff too, but storytelling, but it's, you know, Trudeau definitely um, caught my attention and got me out of my seat and up to Ottawa to encounter somebody. I, if you look on, you know, read it online and feel free to comment, of course, and let me know your thoughts. But uh, I think you're going to find it's an interesting um, encounter. With, it really with a, was. A I found it really, uh, I found it really interesting. And uh, the, um, it was, it was funny to sort of see the the guy's reaction to speaking to Obama. I mean, he really, <laughs> he really seemed like, I mean, I, I, he seemed like he was genuinely sort of like uh, on his heels by the whole thing. I'm still looking forward to the day when you run for governor. And when I do. Some sort of cedar mania sweeps New York State. And uh, and I can interview you, and you can be astounded at, at, at meeting world leaders yourself. Well, uh, there's still time, uh, Guy. Hope springs eternal. I appreciate That's it. Right. Guy Lawson, folks. GuyLawson.com. We'll, we'll put all the links uh, to your books at uh, Majority.fm and, of course, the piece in the New York Times. Uh, Guy, thanks so much for your time today. Thanks, Sam. Great stuff. I'll talk to you soon.